Hi, Hanshi Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanshi's World. Tonight we're going to talk about the release of my new book, The Shogun's Scroll, released by Total Publishing. This is written in the form of a docu-fiction book where I'm using the voice of Hidetomo Nakadai, a fictional character in the court of Minamoto Yoritomo. Now, Minamoto Yoritomo was the first shogun of Japan. He just wrested control. He just took it. And as a result, he was one of the most fearful and fearsome generals in all of Japanese history. And what we've put together in this book is how to control all aspects of the realm. It's a very, very important thing for you to understand how taking over the realm and running it successfully without any worries about anybody trying to usurp you. This is important. And there are many things that we discuss in here. The first thing you have to understand when you're taking over a realm is how power comes to be. Now, undoubtedly, it's based on the ideas of a man who wants to be in charge of his own destiny. And being in charge of your own destiny is not generally that easy to do. And the reason for that is because you're usually going to be confronted with all kinds of obstacles. So you have to have a real iron will. And the iron will that Minamoto Yoritomo used was essentially devastating to those who went up against him. And because of that, he developed a reputation of being merciless. And yet, because of his attitudes and understanding what it meant to take over control of an empire, he was at the same time very fair and had maintained a lot of integrity, maintained a lot of honesty. One of the ways that one takes uh, control of an entire empire is by making sure that those who are not in league with the way you're thinking have to be deposed. So kind of like uh, any of the other books on high-end management, it's very important that you understand your own goals and that you have the will, not the willpower. As I've discussed before, willpower is very debilitating because eventually you've got to stop and you've got to recharge your batteries. But willing something and working on it on that level enables you to ascend to higher levels of accomplishment without, again, any real competition looking to usurp you. Now, there are different times of realms and different ways to handle all aspects of the realm. There are private domains. And there are public domains. Private domains are those kinds of things that are corporations where you're running a business and making sure that things are on the up and up. Generally, you're not involved with thousands of people. But when you're running a public domain and you're maintaining it and you're keeping conscious of what has to be done to attain the goals that you have set for yourself, you're going to find yourself constantly on your toes. The slightest evidence of you not being in total control is going to send a message to anyone who you, would usurp you. And you have to remember, when you're taking control of an entire realm, everybody's looking to usurp you. Why? Because they figure that everybody figures they can do the job better than everybody else. Except the person who's actually doing the job, who is trying to maintain the structure of the environment for the benefit of all concerned. Minamoto Yoritomo knew what he was doing. He knew how to control his troops. He knew how to control his court. Hidetomo Nakadai, who was a regent in Yoritomo's court, was very well versed in the political tactics that are required to maintain control of the realm. Strategies were discussed back and forth between Nakadai and Yoritomo and Yoritomo would bounce ideas off of Nakadai, who had license to correct the shogun. And this is a very, very unique position. Essentially, uh, Nakadai was the equivalent, perhaps, of um, a general, a Supreme Court justice, anyone who has ultimate authority in a situation. Actually, essentially, Nakadai was... Yoritomo's right-hand man. And as they got on in the development of controlling the realm and building it and unifying Japan at the time, many things came to light. One of the things they learned was how to combine the different aspects of the realm. 
and different domains and how to make deals with this person, that person, keeping harmony between all at the same time. This is a very, very astute position that can only be attained through severe, and I use the word severe, development of consciousness. Because one of the things that you have to do when you're controlling a realm is you have to understand the parameters of granting favors. Granting favors cannot be done on an open level where say, hey, I'm going to do you a favor. People that you tell are going to be done a favor or you're going to do a favor for someone find themselves in a very, very precarious position of, gee, well, I did this, so why does he think he's doing me a favor? Which is curious if you think about what we're talking about. When you do someone a favor, you do it in a very subtle manner. The reason you do it in a very subtle manner is so that it will instill itself in the mind of the person receiving the favor. Once the person receiving the favor knows that it is a favor, regardless of their attitudes, regardless of their perspective, they essentially understand what they have to do to maintain a good light in the court of the person giving the favor. And so that develops itself as well. Yoritomo was famous for controlling his entire realm by his own abilities. Yes, he had counselors, and it's essential that you have counselors. Without counselors, you're going to make a lot of errors in judgment based on other things that you're involved with. So you have to have someone that's not necessarily looking over your shoulder, but keeping in mind the objective that's being sought to obtain, maintain, and sustain. There's a lot of common usage today that is used like growing a business and growing an empire. You don't grow a business. You don't grow an empire. You build it. You build it from the ground up, brick by brick. Growing is a very, very nice term, but it really doesn't get where you have to get to. Building something, reinforcing your previous decisions, and maintaining yourself in the good light of the general populace is important. And it really doesn't matter who in your court is opposing you, because as soon as they do, you depose them. It's a very fine art, a high art, if you will, to be able to apply cruelty with the right attitude and the right mentality. Yes, you must apply cruelty. If you don't apply cruelty, people will take advantage of your good nature. Why? Because that's the way people are, especially those who are high up in the food chain. As soon as anyone gets out of line, they must immediately be squashed and they must immediately know who is in charge and what the parameters of the evolution of the relationship can develop to or not develop to. Keeping in mind the emperor's good graces. See, the shogun was essentially the ruler of the country, but the emperor was the one who owned, if you will, the country by divine right or however you want to look at it. So whatever the emperor wanted, the shogun was prepared to put into place. However, he did it with the manner that he was able to do it, making sure that the emperor was kept aware of everything that was going on. Except in those cases where the emperor would totally disagree, the shogun having the military might and military mentality that was required to maintain the structure of the realm could sometimes in a very adroit manner, override the emperor's wishes, but not in such a manner as to put the emperor into an embarrassing position. So it became very important that the shogun be a master politician. At the same time being a master politician, he had to know how far he could go with whoever he had to deal with. And that also depended on the amount of wealth that the people he was dealing with had. It also had to do with the amount of troops an individual landowner or daimyo, daimyo great person, had and that would be necessary to call upon 
at the proper time in order to prevent any kinds of situation that the Shogun himself could not deal with without the additional resources. One of the things that is very important to understand when a warlord is taking over control of an entire realm is that he must be aware of the religious beliefs, yes, and the customs of the people he is taking over. Unless, of course, he's just going to totally annihilate them and not leave a trace, which has been tried in many, many times in many different cultures and societies. It doesn't work. It doesn't last. So it's essential that you understand what motivates the people, what gives them joy, what gives them happiness. You must also celebrate their great artists. You must celebrate their great teachers and scholars. As a matter of fact, by doing that, you also give yourself the added advantage of learning more and being able to develop more. Because once you understand your, quote, enemy, unquote, it is very easy to manipulate them. Of course, you have to understand yourself as well. There are other things that the Shogun's scroll gets into. Revenge, miserliness, why it is important to be able to countermand an order, and how to get the job done. And at the same time, making everyone feel that they were germane to getting it done, which in fact they are, and the wise Shogun, the wise warlord knows this. He knows that without the people, he really has nothing to work with unless he wants to start again. And there are certain aspects of the Shogun that have to be dealt with. The Shogun has an enormous amount of responsibility and sometimes may be misunderstood by certain actions and certain mannerisms in which he conducts himself. The main thing the Shogun has to do is beware of arrogance, conceit, and false pride. So I think you're going to find the Shogun Scrolls a serious addition to your library on personal development, management, and you'll get a good idea of what it is to control all aspects of the realm. The book is available from Amazon and also Hanchi.com, my website, where you can get an autographed copy of it. Feel free to email me, sfk422 at gmail.com, and I will respond to all your emails. The Shogun's Scroll, absolutely essential addition to your library of martialism. Get it today. Thank you.